Starting off with a bit of a misnomer here. BF-109 takeoff, easy. Uh, I don't believe that taking off in this aircraft is ever easy. And I'll explain more about that here in a second. Let's wait for the narration. I'm sure it's going to kick in, in here. this mission, you need to take off and climb to an altitude of one kilometer. Hopefully it doesn't give me a time limit. Okay, so notoriously difficult to handle on the ground and notoriously difficult to steer, uh, to take off. Uh, a few reasons for that. First off, we go to external view, mostly to admire the aircraft itself. It's got, as you'll notice, very narrow track landing here. This makes it, uh, you know, see how it's kind of wobbling? Like it wants to tip over. It's got a narrow base. You know, it's kind of like sitting on a stool with, um, you know, are my flaps down? What is that? Oh, that's the radiator uh, vents. All right, so um, I'm not going to use flaps. I'm going to lock my tail wheel because it. Okay, so free. Okay, that's that's your tail wheel lock. Forward is is locked. You want to keep yourself tracking straight and level. Okay, so per instructions from the um, training video I flew just a few minutes ago. It's been maybe an hour or so. So let's see how how much I I can remember here. Shut off the gun sight. I need it right now. Um, no flaps. So what you do, full right rudder, because you have low rudder authority here. Oh, why do I have a wingman? I'm going to bump right into him. Full right rudder, apply the brakes, stick full back, pitch down a little bit on the trim, and then you add power. You're going to watch this. This is your atmospheric pressure, your manifold pressure, so you want like a 1.2 atmosphere. Release the brakes and then put the power on up to like 1.35 to 1.4. And as you accelerate, you come up to 100 or so kilometers per hour. You release back pressure on the stick. The tail will raise, you accelerate, and the plane will take off eventually. Um, it's a short, fast, terrifying experience. So let's, uh, let's, let's crash this plane. Brakes off, rudder still full right. I don't have rudder authority yet, so I'm using brakes a little bit. That's why I don't want a wingman. Wow! <laughs> yeah, you gotta be ready for that. You gotta so you gotta use right rudder and right aileron to not see how my plane rolled violently to the left. That could kill you. Um, I'm surprised my wingman didn't run into me. So, let's uh, continue on here. Their climbing requirement. In, like I said, uh, this thing is. Like I said, it, I think maybe in the previous video, uh, the 109K is just kind of unstable. And back in the days before fly-by-wire, that's how you got... There was always a trade-off between maneuverability, agility, you know, and being responsive and being stable. It was going to be one, you know, a stable aircraft or an, or an agile one, and everything was a compromise between those two, like, those traits. So, um... Gun sight up so I can see my VSI here. Um, if you look at the design of the 109 and, the, and something similar, kind of contemporary, the Spitfire, check this out. Oops, I need to erase those gear. <laughs> Nothing like external view to show you how jacked up you are. Could end the mission now, but I want to talk a little bit more about this airframe. Hang on one second. So you notice we got a very skinny airplane, very thin. You can see the pilot inside. The plane is the aircraft is barely wider than the person sitting inside of it. Uh, 
the cockpit it'll be cramped um, and the, the theory back when this was designed similar to the Spitfire this was like 19 late 1930s like 37 38 something like that basically you get the the most powerful engine you can find in the most streamlined thin airframe to increase speed So we've got a lot of power in this inline engine. And because of that reason, um, for fighter design for quite a while, um, especially in Europe, I believe, they they didn't really consider radial engines to be sufficient because they have that massive frontal area. Look, look how small that front profile is. It's, it's tiny. It's as small as it can be, and that's, that's by design. It reduces drag. So you've got a high-performance aircraft. The problem is... With this, and I assume this Spitfire, we'll find out here in a, about a month or so. It's kind of squirrely and like wants to bounce around a little bit. If you want to look here at, at my turn and bank coordinator, anytime I change my power setting, the yaw wants to change as well. So you, you know, if you change your speed, look, I pitch down and it yaws to the right. You know, so I'm sorry, the yaws to the left I have to correct with right rudder. And it's kind of hard to coordinate and. It's a little, you know, kind of like it's got a mind of its own. But the trade-off to that is that it just turns on a dime. Just It'll haul right around. See, I'm blacking out. That's how responsive this thing is. It just handles like, like it just wants to go in different directions, which is exactly the situation with uh, less stable aircraft. You know, we can talk about fly-by-way later. Uh, if you fly the Mirage... DCS or the F-16 and DMS, you'll know what relaxed dynamic stability can do for agility. Whereas a person couldn't fly something that is dynamically unstable, a computer can keep it stable, and that allows more modern jets to just have kind of the best of both worlds by using a computer to compensate for the instability in real time and correct for all these little... See how the plane is kind of bouncing around a little bit? If you move the center of gravity back, in an airframe, it becomes much more responsive and much more agile and much more able and willing, and in fact, you know, kind of deterministically going to turn in some direction very very quickly. It's kind of like pushing a paper airplane from the back instead of throwing it from the nose. So if you shift the center of gravity back, you get a less stable aircraft. And you can test this in DCS by loading the auxiliary fuel tank in the P-51 full and reducing the load in the wing tanks. And you'll see how that feels. Like, it really wants to just depart, woof, you know, like, yank out of your hand. And that's really agile, but you can't control it. If you had a computer to compensate for that, well, maybe you might be able to, and that's why we have very agile jets. That's why you can fly things like the F-117, which is aerodynamically horrible. Uh, it flies like a brick. A human couldn't fly it, actually, but with the assistance of a computer, you know, keeping it pointing, you know, straight instead of whatever direction it wants to go in, you can actually fly it. So, there's your aerodynamics lesson. <laughs> like, five minutes of me rambling about that for what should have been like a 30 second mission. But, if you're playing DCS, I assume you might be interested in that kind of stuff. So, uh, next mission coming up. We'll see if I can crash it uh, in landing or whatever comes next. All right. Thanks again.